And now we return to As the Paint Dries. Someone left the cake out in the rain. I don't think that I could take it. Cause it took so long to bake it. And I'll never have that recipe again. Oh no! Oh, 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 Sorry, you scared the paint out of me. I'm so sorry. I was you were singing. Yes, you were singing. Singing, yes. <laughs> I I noticed it was one of your favorites. Yes. MacArthur Park, a song by Richard Harris. Right. One of the great sad bearded men ballads. Sure. Oh, that sweet green icing flowing down. Uh, Biff, what are you doing out here in the rain? Well, Painterly, sometimes when it rains like this, I feel the need to just come outside and stand in it. You do? I do. Oh. I find the rain very... Contemplative? Mm. Introspective? Mm. Ruminative? Nah. Mostly, it just makes me think. <sighs> yes, well, I too find myself feeling a tad pensive. Really? That means thoughtful. Oh. Yes, so many thoughts on a rainy day like this. A day like this. Yes. Yes. Thoughts. Thoughts. Like. Like. How bad will allergy season be? Will we ever get back together? What was that? Uh, allergies. The pollen count is gonna be high. Don't I know it? <laughs> yeah, uh, lots of pollen. Yes. Allergy <laughs> season is definitely what I was pensiving about too. Uh, right. Well, Biff, it's getting chilly out. I I think I should be going. All right, Painterly. It was good to see you. You too, Biff. Uh, Biff. Yes, Painterly. Do me a favor and remember to come in out of the rain. Sure, Pinterly. I've tied this small piece of painter's tape around my finger. That way, I won't forget. Okay, okay, that's good. There would be another song for me. For I will sing it. There would be another dream for me. Someone will bring it. I will drink the wine while it is warm. And never let you catch me looking at the sun. Ow. Oh. And after all the loves of my life, after all the loves of my life, you'll still be the one. You'll still be the one. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Andy. Welcome to Furniture Fables. Forgetting to come in out of the rain. Seems simple enough for most people, but not so for an unwanted piece of furniture. Many furniture fablers will come across water damaged pieces that they may or may not choose to restore. Or like in this fabler's case, they may find that they were the ones who left the cake furniture out in the rain and so of course compelled by a strong sense of responsibility <coughs> guilt they feel they must do all they can to save their soggy friend before it is too late
Ah, here's my forgotten friend now. Doesn't look too bad, right? Well, can we talk about how much rain we've had this spring in California? Enough to convince even the most enthusiastic outdoor enjoyers to stay put and just watch the rain from the comfort of the kitchen window bench. <laughs> Hi guys. But this little friend somehow did not make it all the way into the workshop and wow, <laughs> my goodness, poor little guy. All right, this is a vintage, probably 1950s, solid wood square side table with a decorative veneer top. It had all of its original brass hardware and it had great legs and amazingly not a drop of water had gotten inside and the drawer still worked. Ah, looks like it was maybe made in Chicago. And so encouraged by the recent sunshine, I began. I started by just taking a sponge and using the rough side of it, I knocked off a lot of that remaining old finish on the top of the veneer. I realized that that little bit in the center was not coming off very easily and I was really afraid of busting through that veneer. So instead I decided to apply some citrus strip to it and to that little spot up there. And then I put the table out into the sun for about a half an hour. Then I removed all that cool brass hardware and got ready to clean. After I gave the drawer a good scrubbing with some simple green and warm water, I scraped off the stripper on the top of the table and then I cleaned the entire top with some mineral spirits. And then I began to sand. Okay, so oftentimes when I am prepping a piece for painting, I do what is called a scuff sand. Scuff sanding is great when you can get away with it. It is literally just scuffing up the existing finish so that it is no longer smooth or slick. And so that way the paint that you want to apply will be able to adhere to it. But this piece needed more TLC than a simple scuff sand. You can see, I think, that its entire finish was pretty loose, most likely from being out in the rain for so long. And so it needed a much more thorough sanding in order to be prepped. We definitely don't want to apply paint on top of a finish that is flaking or peeling off. That's not a recipe for success. So when you have a finish like this, you need to spend a little extra time with your sanders, both electrical and hand. I also carefully removed the rest of the finish from the top and got into all those nooks and crannies on the drawer front. Okay, so here he is, not gorgeous yet, but ready for some primer. I used my spray can of shellac based primer on the drawer front and on the body of the table, making sure to protect that top with some packing paper and painter's tape. Once my primer had dried, I began to paint. This is a beautiful black. Its name is Coal Black. This is by Fusion Mineral Paint, one of my favorite furniture paints to use. 
And I think this black is going to give our little table a great touch of kind of moody sophistication. Now I could have used a clear shellac or even a tinted primer, but I didn't have any of those on hand. And you know, the thing about a white primer under a black paint is that it really keeps you honest. If there is even one speck of that primer not covered, you are going to see it. Plus this is a very high quality paint and so while I did end up doing three coats, I almost could have stopped at two, which is pretty impressive. Okay, let's take a good look here at our top. I unwrapped it and then I sprayed it with some water. This is kind of a good way to be able to see how something might look once it's stained. You can see that especially over here on the right side, all those kind of dark spots, yeah mostly right along that trim edge. That is probably water damage, which can discolor wood like this. So given that the majority of the discoloration was on those side edges of the tabletop, and just how thin this veneer was, I decided my best option was to go ahead and tape off all four of the sides and bring that coal black paint up onto the top of the table. I did three coats and then I removed my tape. Okay, so do you remember this box of goodies from the last fable? Yes, during my break I had indeed done a little bit of shopping and I think that for this table, this decoupage paper by redesign with Prima will be just right. This is called Aged Patina. I loved its deep moody blues and its really rich pattern. And so after doing some measuring and cutting, I applied some matte gel adhesive to the tops of each of those raised placards on the drawer front. And then I smoothed down a piece of decoupage paper. I used some balled up saran wrap to smooth out any lines and then applied another layer of the glue on top of the paper as well.
Then I did the same thing with those inset side panels on the table, adding a large piece of the decoupage paper and smoothing more gel adhesive over the top. I did that with all three sides. Okay, back to our top. I gave my paint border a good sanding and then I got out some stain and finishing oil in one. If you see my fables, um, you know this is a favorite product of mine. This is in a color I haven't used yet. This is ebony. And so after stirring it really, really well, I poured a little bit right onto the tabletop and started to spread that around with a little chip brush. This product is made by Fusion and you can use this product to seal the paint also. So I decided to just spread it all over the top of the table, including those painted edges and sides. I made a nice even layer and then I let that sit for about 20 minutes and then came back in and wiped it back with a lint free cloth. While that was drying, I decided to give our hardware a quick clean. I soaked it in some vinegar and some hot water. To seal and protect our decoupage paper and give the entire piece a beautiful rich finish, I used some clear wax, buffing it in with my large brush and then wiping it back with a lint-free cloth. It's not necessary with Fusion's paint to add a separate top coat, but the decoupage paper really does recommend that it has a top coat. That layer of glue is not a true top coat. So this wax will protect that paper and it will add just another little bit of luster to our paint. I decided to try the hardware without its original back plates. I, I think I kind of prefer it that way, but just in case and to make sure that I didn't lose those back plates, I went ahead and installed the hardware pulls with those back plates on the inside of the drawer. That way they won't get lost and if someone wants to put them back on, they're right there and those little mini finishing nails got taped to the bottom of the drawer. All right, team. Do you remember our soggy and sad friend? With the flaking and failing finish, but some promising jewelry and impressive pins? Well, here he is, now.
Well, I think it's official. This little friend has survived the flood with his stunning black dress pants and freshly refinished top. He looks ready to dance the night away. And with his gorgeous four-sided paper detailing, he can impress from any angle. His slimmed down hardware gives a subtly more modern air, while his darkly framed stain disguises any signs of his once hard life. Our once flooded friend has gone from forgotten to unforgettable. So what did my waterlogged buddy cost me? Well, I believe I actually paid $20 for that little table itself. Primer and paint were probably another $20. That beautiful decoupage paper, aged patina was $16 probably another $8 for the stain, and then I'll add another $10 for some soap, sanding pads, that little bit of wax, rags, etc., bringing my total out-of-pocket cost to $74. So what might I list it for? Well, it is a single side table. It might be harder to move, but I think with that original quality married with its beautiful new modern suit, a price of $275 seems fair. So what did you think? Did you like that framed, stained top? Do you think that salvaged our top well enough? What about that ebony stain? I was surprised at how much I liked that really dark stain. In person, it is just gorgeous. How about those pulls without the back plates? Are you a fan or are you missing them? I hope that you love it. I think he turned out to be a pretty handsome dude after surviving all of that water. If you agree, please make sure to give me a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any future fables. Thank you so much for joining me, my friends. Don't forget to check outside. Make sure you haven't left something outside in the rain. And I will see you next time for more furniture fables. Have I left anything out there? I don't think so. It doesn't matter. It's all the rain is done. It won't rain until next January. <laughs>